Okay, this is from Steven. And uh, this came a couple days ago. It basically shows uh, his question is for for you and I, Don, is like, uh, what are you guys' favorite hobby? Favorite hobby? Oh, I like watching Dan go down uh, to the buffet and uh, help all the old ladies out of the way. You know? <laughs> uh, and, uh, well, you haven't seen much action of that lately this past uh, year. I mean, with, uh, with the old pandemic. You know, oh, it's been a sad year. Yeah, yeah, it's been a kind of... Yeah, the old lady population has been kind of, you know, repopulated pretty yeah, well. It's kind of like, you know, yeah. 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 They're yeah. safe to get back in line. Yeah. Only until a total lift of that is game on again. Yeah, yeah, get watch out, ladies. Put on your roller derby outfits, your helmet, your gloves, and no old pads. So, well, if that's your, your favorite hobby, because it went out to go and says, is it cooking? There's a question, is it cooking? It is, or, or is it tending to your horses? What is your favorite thing to do that gives uh, you guys the most peace? I do hunting, but I haven't been able to hunt for a decade to my back. Okay. So I guess, I don't even know if that, that would be just their answer anymore. <laughs> well, I mean, it, it'd be something that if you're, if, if you're, uh, if and when you're able to do it, that's what you would like to be doing. Yeah, I'm mean, riding my horse too. Yeah, so. Well, there's actually a, as as this to be hobby. I, I actually have a a woodworking type of area out in my my barn. Yeah. So I do like uh, tinkering with uh, making things. It's just it's been a while since I actually last made something. I've got all kinds of projects that I made. Still on an art. <laughs> So, Mark number two. <laughs> I don't, so again, I, I'd say that that's some of the stuff that that, uh, that I enjoy is woodworking that, but then I also enjoy uh, uh, working on, uh, I've got a fruit, fruit orchard. So assuming I plant the trees and uh, tend it to them, uh, the cool part is... Uh, You're kind of fruity, I can see you out there. <laughs> Self-sufficient there, Don. Okay, you're, you're, you're getting your wires crossed over there. Let's get, <laughs> you gotta check that medication. But, uh, for example, I have two beehives that should be coming out by property somewhere in the next 45 to 60 days. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm actually looking forward to that. I have a couple of beehives come out of there because it'll actually help with the pollination of all these various right. uh, fruit trees and uh, right. should be a good yield of, uh, of honey on top of all that. And uh, it's actually with the local skill center is how I had to find out about this young man that uh, he just got a great... Uh, Appreciation of bees, and that I mean, when I first met him, I was kind of blown away about his knowledge. I mean, literally, I was like a, a little mini professor. The way he just went on and on all the different tangents about bees, this and bees, that. And his parents were right there, and the, when the uh, mom would say one thing, he actually would correct her and go in the Ooh. lab. And like going, Ooh. he, he, uh, but I mean, he, he did it, he did it in all in a good way. He did it all in a good way. So I'm actually, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, you know, or you don't remember the uh, killer bee thing that hit there a decade or two decades ago? Uh, I was told that it only takes one generation of bees to remove that killer bee out of out of them again. I'll see that. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm aware of that. But, well, I, I just know that the bee population has been going down in the United States, and I think part of it has because. Been, Okay, is that because? Because, because. <laughs> well, I, well, Before that happened, there were... <laughs> well, no, I should know, there, there, has been a, a, uh, there has been a decrease in the yeah. bee uh, population. Well, yeah, everybody started killing them because they were afraid of uh, being stuck to them, yeah. Yeah, being, being stung, but then you know, a lot of people were starting to worry about, you know, the killer bee type of syndrome mm -hmm. there as well, because how, how do they know which, what, who's friendly and who's, who's not, so it in a process. I know. I swear, I'm quite the bastard sometimes. I just, you know. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, I know. He feeds you. I know, I know. That's why she got to go with me. All right, back me up, won't you? Yeah. So, uh, well, it does say okay, but, but it was kind of interesting. We talked about cooking. Is it cooking or tending to horses? But you, and you do have, do you have one or two horses? I just have one now. Well, I have one. Okay, well, I have one horse. All right. Okay, so, all right. There's that. Let's go on to yet another question here. Huh. 
got this, okay, this goes, this is from Pete. It goes, got a question that I get mixed responses from. I'm 25, I have a good job in construction, in a, oh, in a construction company that I've only been at for a year now, but I've been bumped up six times since, since then. I live with my parents, and I pay rent and give them money for, I give them money for bills and or groceries. I have left before to work out of state as a mechanic. Okay, sorry, it goes on. Okay, I left. I have. I have left before to work out of state as a mechanic. Before I'm old, but I fell on my ass after two years of Montana, so I had to to move back. Should I feel bad for still living with my parents? I was raised old school. Uh, okay, it says I was raised old school in Chicago in Phoenix, and was always t told, along with my sister, that once I hit 18, I'm out and can't come back. But I did, and my parents understand. But I still feel like I'm letting myself down. What do you guys think? Letting himself or letting his parents down. Well, I mean that. It, well, it goes. I was raised right, school. What does Eighteen. But I did, and my parents understand. But I still feel like I'm letting myself down. But but basically, you know, the original question is. No, here's the son. I'm 25. I have a good job in a construction company that I've only been at for a year, but I've been bumped up six times then. I still live with my parents, but I pay rent and give them money for bills and or for, or for groceries. I have left before for work. I was state as a mechanic before on my own, but I fell on my ass after two years in Montana, so I had to move back. Should I feel bad for still living with my parents? No, because okay. you're... you're, you're giving them money for rent and for the bills and you're not going down to the bar and getting drunk and getting a DUI and get and going to jail for various other things so that would be letting your parents down that yeah that would be a failure but you know you know you're showing your parents gratitude by paying you know pitching in for rent and utilities and you got great parents you know um I had to move back in with my parents um, once or twice because um, I moved away to start something in a different state and that didn't work out. So I came back, dropped off my, my first wife and I went off to Oklahoma Horse Women's School, you know, and I did their 12 week program there. And uh, when I graduated that, I came back and I, the hell, I was working four jobs, you know. I worked for a guy named Tyler Basinger. You know, he was a horseshoer. I was an apprentice. I was trying to start my own horseshoeing company. I was um, working part-time at a psych facility as, um, you know, one of the security people, uh, you know, with the, the people who were institutionalized. And then I also was a fireman, you know, a part-time fireman as a reserve. And then eventually I got hired as a full-time fireman down to Bisbee, Arizona. So I got to quit, you know, working at the psych facility. And I, I was still um, a reserve fireman with the other, as a full-time fireman. I was still trying to get my own business going. I was a reserve. And uh, I think Tyler, I think Tyler might have fired me, you know. <laughs> well, okay, okay, I, I totally agree with you. I mean, I don't think the guy's a failure at all for having to move back. I mean, just like you said, he was paying, he was paying when he, when he could pay money because right. he, you know, but, but that's kind of what your, what your family is there for. Your family ultimately, I mean, when you have your own children, you want your children to eventually, they have to leave the nest. Yeah, but you want them to do better than you. Right, it's exactly. Yeah. And, and, and uh, they may need help. And every now and then they're going to fall down. Well, yeah. well that's what, 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 okay, when your child is first learning to walk, yeah. you're right there coaxing them along, stuff like this, they're waddling around. If they fall down, you're there to help pick them up. Same, same, same thing. <laughs> same, <laughs> same, same thing when it comes to, to life. I mean, if they fall down on a job or something like that, you're here to help pick them up. You know, and, and uh, give them a little talk to, give them a meal or something like this, and, and aim them in that right direction again, and, and uh, see what happens. So, I, I don't think that, 
best you can hope for as a parent is that your kids don't fall into drugs and right. other shit, prostitution, and also that they don't um, go to jail, you know? Yeah, yeah, that's the best you can hope for. Yeah, know? I actually think, I actually wish uh, Pete, yeah, though, Pete from Phoenix, I think Pete, you're doing a good job there, especially. Yeah, you know, absolutely. You're, you're back on your feet, uh, you've got a good job here now, so. You're helping yeah. out with your parents and you're not in jail. Exactly, you know? so I think you're doing, doing great there, Pete. So keep up the good work and uh, all the best there to you. So we, we, we took uh, responses there, we took responses from uh, Firecracker and uh, and then we basically just we, we did a little about the uh, the hobby right there. But then moving on, one of the questions that yeah, we actually talked about a little bit there off camera there with Doug, we talked about you know other types of uh, sure. other types of uh, products. This just it. <laughs> Can you believe it, Quinn? I know it's just hard to believe you right now. Hot off the press right there. <laughs> That's a that's a big multi-syllable word right there, Doc. Trans. <laughs> trans. What? You're just as good as my tyrant resistor. Oh, 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 oh this is resistor. a question. Okay, I was looking. Okay. Uh, we'll just simply say it's from my Tyrannosaurus Rex to Ister uh, Kelly uh, as you can see Allodocious. Okay. Oh my. This, you know. I, I can see why you went off on, on, on an ALS day right there. This, this question right now, this uh -oh. question right now could just be, you know, Quinn, you might have to stay over here by me here right there. I might need your, I might need your protection right now because it, basically the question is, da, 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 who would win in your prime between you and I here, Mr. Fry, uh, when you consider, okay, what year do you consider your prime? Now, now, Don, maybe I should start this first because I know you're going to probably say it, you know, the BC something or for my prime. Yeah, our right primes now. are a couple of centuries apart, aren't they? <laughs> you got in trouble for child abuse. <laughs> uh, so I was out there with Alexander the Great, I know, yeah, at the time. Yeah. Yes, uh, you, you were his horse, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, uh, you know. I'll just call you T here right now. I'll just keep this this this, this for sure right now. But uh, I'll just say that, that yeah, it's uh, you know, everybody has their pride. And never ever say a speculative type of question like this. There there is no right answer. There and there really is no wrong answer when it comes to this. I mean, it's uh, you know, Don Fry was the champion in his pride. I was a champion yeah, in my prime. prime. Yeah. Just, just, just like you know, the, uh, you've got the, the brand new champion right now, for the, the gentleman from, from uh, Africa, who just, yeah, who just, who just, who, who just, who just, who just, who just won it just recently. Yeah. yeah, just so I mean, everyone has got their moment in time. Is what I, I refer to it as your, your moment in time. So it, it's his moment in time right now. Uh, yeah, it's really a hard to measure, you know. From this era to this era, when, you know, the only way you do it is by competition, and the time factor is no way. Yeah, you know? no, it's a, you, you, you've seen that in a sport of boxing, uh, you know, for you know many many years, and just who's the greatest boxer right. of all time, and, and you, you can't really say that because each person in their prime, you just don't know how they would have ever measured up in, in the first place. It would be something different to the game. Yes, exactly. The, the sport has continued to evolve. You know, the thing that uh, Don and I have a goal for is fact that, that we were involved in the the first aspect of the of the Ultimate Fighting Championship, and that was known as the NHB, the No the, the, the Holds Barn era. So it had basically just the two rules at that time of no biting, no eye gouging. But they were more guidelines than anyways. Exactly. People didn't pay attention. To yeah, they, they, they weren't exactly. Yeah, they weren't exactly. They weren't enforced. <laughs> yeah, they, they weren't enforced. They were, you wouldn't be disqualified if you happened to, to gouge a guy's eye or something like right. that. Because there actually were, were matches where uh, people like Paul Barlow ended up getting his eye gouged at one point in time later on to lose eyesight in that eye. Yeah. So again, it was uh, it was an unfortunate thing to have have, have happen. But uh, so you know, and then to see the sport. Transition from the no holds barred era to the present state of mixed martial arts, and it didn't just change overnight. So no. you could be, 
you could be in a state and they might have some different rules. I remember being in, inside of a cage at the time, having an opponent pinned up against a cage wall, I'm thinking, hey, hey ref, am I allowed to? Because I did not know. Yeah. I mean, it, it was okay in this state over here, but I'm in a different state here tonight. And that was, uh, I mean, I'm already tipping my head to my opponent was about to come. But, uh, well, it went from know. a fight to a sport to a TV show. Yeah, so, no, no, I, I mean, to totally agree. I mean, it, it's, I mean there's, there's great competitors, but it, I, I actually look upon the UFC now as basically as a civilized competition and uh, you know the, the real, I mean you, you still have to be a, a, a great athlete that is able to adapt to all of the new conditions but with each new rule and new adaptation it changes the athletes, it changes them how they have to train and it takes away more and more. You know, we do look at boxing, kickboxing, Muay Thai, Karate Kung Fu, they all have rules to them. And most of those rules are the moment that you get clinched, the referee steps in there goes, no, 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 step away from each other, and then re re regain fighting. Whereas, like, Mitch Martial Arts has an element of grappling there with it. But even then, I don't think Dana White is actually that big of a fan of the grappling portion because he, had, he knows that most of the fans don't understand what's happening down on the road. They don't understand what someone's actually working for, some type of a crank or a choke or a submission lock. So I, I, I know there's been times when some of the play-by-play -play color commentators don't, aren't even aware of some of the moves that are taking place. Uh, and uh, you know, they've had to no worries. Ask, 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 ask questions. We're, we want instant gratification. And, you know, if it takes longer than five seconds for the, to get a result, people are booing, you know? <laughs> they're bored, because like you said, they're confused, they don't know what the hell's going on. Yeah. And there's so many goddamn rules. I mean, now they let women do the damn thing, you know? Jeez, and they're better than the guys most of the time. Well, they don't tend to te teetotal around, uh, they tend to kind of get after it a little bit more, so that's... I, I, Bunch I, I angry bitches, yeah. <laughs> Too <laughs> fighting over that. And I asked Kenny to burn the beans. <laughs> oh my! So here, moving along. This is something we actually brought up uh, uh, off the air. There, uh, we were talking uh, again. We're, we're done with questions right now. But uh, for anyone that's watching, if you actually have a question, uh, they can actually send their questions to. Tell, tell me, Tony. Uh, the comments down below, or we will put up uh, the comments down below. <laughs> leave a leave your questions, and we will also put up a email address. Okay. Get yep. So email. hopefully, hopefully, you guys heard from the voice right there, and uh, so that uh, if you have any additional questions, and uh, you know, please please ask ask the questions because uh, we always as Don and I have to say uh, we were here to uh, help to educate people, even if we have to. You know, grab you by the uh, scruff of the neck and shove your face into the cow pie of reality. But you may not like the answers or how they smell, but uh, it'll be a very truthful answer. <laughs>